What is good, YouTube? It's your boy Quinn Way Basketball Analysis coming to you with that what to expect from the Boston Celtics. They landed a huge offseason. We all was talking shit about Danny Ainge. We all was doubting. Let's just be real about it. Even on ESPN, NBA TV, Danny Ainge, he, he didn't make the moves to get Jimmy Butler. He failed to get Paul George. Then he comes out of nowhere, gets Gordon Hayward. He comes out of nowhere, trade for Kyrie Irving. And Gordon Hayward in the same offseason. But we all thought that he was holding his cards. We all thought he was going to wait another year when LeBron got older. We all thought he was just going to continue to stockpile assets and wait till LeBron gets old so he can rule the East. But instead, he made two moves that was able to put us back into the forefront. Even though he was the number one seed in the East last year, we have to give credit to the Cavaliers because they was not that far off. Plus, they had a lot of injuries. But the Celtics still won enough games to get the number one seed. And they was able to make it to the even Eastern Conference Finals, even though they went seven games with the Wizards. When I seen that, I knew they wasn't beating the Cavs. And with that being said... They're an excellent team. They have a championship coach to me and Brad Stevens that put his his players in a position where they succeed offensively and defensively. He knows the strength of his players and he knows where to get them, where they could succeed and thrive in the offense. And he puts them in position like Cody Zeller and all these guys. You would you would think that nobody would care about these type of guys. Even like Kelly Olenek, he, he's going now, but he was thriving in the offense of Brad Stevens. Even so, he was a short thing type of player when he came out of college. He has really put Jerry Sullinger and all these guys, they, they was able to play above their value and continue to grow under Brad Stevens. And another thing about Brad Stevens, he never really had superstar talent. The best player he had was Isaiah Thomas, and I'm not the biggest fan of Isaiah Thomas. And he was still able to win games without Isaiah Thomas. He lost Rondo and everybody, and he was still able to make the playoff with a decent team, not even great, not even outstanding, a decent team. They just show you the strength of Brad Stevens and his ability to coach and get the best out of his players. And he puts the right plays so they can be effective and efficient, even though his players like Marcus Smart that's not that efficient because he's not really that good of a scorer. But he has really helped his team become better than they really are. And now he's finally starting to get the value, and Danny Ainge is finally starting to put the team in the players around him that can help them win a championship Probably not this year, but in the future, he has a closer in Gordon Hayward, another ball handler, another playmaker in Gordon Hayward that can take the pressure off Kyrie. Kyrie is a go-to scorer. He's a clutch fourth-quarter player, too, and he can basically score anytime he wants to. He still has to work on keeping his teammates involved, especially in the playoffs because everybody's going to be double-teaming and trapping and trying to take Kyrie off the, out of his game, and he's got to be able to find his teammates in spots that they're good at I mean, good in, and he has to find his teammates when he's in attack mode to keep them evolved and to keep the defense guessing because you can't be too predictable in the playoffs because that's when turnovers and fatigue happens when you're exhorting too much energy to score or exhorting too much energy to do too much. And at the end of the day, he can just make the simple play inside this offense, and it can get two points like this, get off a screen, hit a wide open three, find Al Horford in off for a dump off, a pick and pop, spot up three. If Kyrie Irving can not have that tunnel vision and just listen to Brad Stevens, which I'm saying he, not, he, he will or not, I'm just saying that's what he needs to do, he can really have an easy 50-60 win season in the East because the East got worse, so it's going to be easier to beat a lot of those teams because a lot of teams are bad now, so they're going to rack up a lot of wins because they are they are in the East, and with that being said, you, you, you have to be like, hey, we got a team that has two all-star players. One was an all-star in the West, and you know how tough how tough that is. And one is a, a multiple-time all-star in general in Kyrie Irving. And then you add a multiple all-star in, in Al Horford who can pass the ball. He's unselfish. He's a team player. He plays within the system but still know how to get his points without being a ball hog or basically forcing and demanding for the ball. He still can be effective whether he's scoring, rebounding, or passing the ball or just making the hockey assist. So they have the team, they have the unselfishness, and Gordon Hayward and the other star, Al Horford, Kyrie Irving is the one that got to say, hey, I wanted this, this is what I want to do, uh, I feel like I had the talent to show that I can carry a team, 
And now he just got to open his eyes a little bit more and just make the simple and right plays. And when he does that, it's going to be a lot easy for him to win in Boston. Like I said, especially because the East is weak. Another thing I want to talk about the Celtics, they gave up a lot to get Kyrie Irving. They gave up a lot to get Gordon Hayward, but they still have Gerald Green. They still have Jalen Brown. They still have Aaron Baines. They still have Marcus Morris. They still have Terry Rozier. They still have Jason Tatum and Marcus Smart, which means that this team can go 9 to 10 deep. Even though a lot of the players are young, they show that they can play on the NBA level and they show that they can score the basketball and they show that they can play multiple positions. They gave up a lot of talent. They still have a, a lot of talent still. So that just show you how long Danny Ainge has been thinking of his master plan because not only did he give a lot of talent away, he still was able to have enough assets to keep talent on the roster because he only got room for 15 players. And... He was able to keep the roster long enough and keep quality players on that roster to where he can make these moves and still have a deep and great bench. Because they have one of the best benches in the NBA. I like Terry Rozier. I like Jalen Brown. I like Jason Tatum. I like Aaron Baines because he's a guy that don't need the ball. He can do all the little dirty work and hit the elbow jumpers and free throws. So I like the roster. I'm a Celtics fan. I've been a Celtics fan damn near all my life. And it's good to see the Celtics on the uprise. It's good to see the Celtics have all-stars. And it's good to see that Danny Ainge has put the assets that he accumulated into a contender now. I'm not saying that they never was a contender, but now they have that star power that they have been missing for all these years. And now they have those closers and them players that can basically take you over the hump. Will they beat Cleveland? That's hard to say because LeBron James is the best player in the East. And he is a dominant player. And damn near you can put any team around him and he can make them win 50 games. And he can carry you to the Eastern Conference Finals. So it's going to be tough because they don't really have that, that out to LeBron. Gordon Hayward's not that guy that can stop LeBron. Jalen Brown has the body. He has the length. He has the athleticism. It's just LeBron is a guy that's going to get where he's he going to get. He's going to do what he want to do because he's going to pick out when he wants to score. And he's going to pick out when to be a passer and when to score the basketball or he's He's just going to choose his shots and just help his teammates stay involved. And that's something that Kyrie has to learn. And when he do, he's going to be unguardable because either he's going to make the right play or he's going to score the basketball, make the right play or score the basketball. And that's going to make this team hard to fucking guard. So I like what Boston has did. I think they'd be a 60 win team. They was able to win high 50s last year. And the East only got weaker. I think they will actually win 60 this year, depending if the Kyrie trade, I mean, how fast Brad Stevens gets to practice with these players because they did cut the preseason too. Depending on how well they gel together at the beginning of the season will tell how many games they will win. But like I said, they is in the week east, so they don't really have to do that much. But as a Celtics fan, I'm happy. I'm a Kyrie fan. I'm glad to have him on board. I'm a Gordon Hayward supporter. I had him as my most underrated player. Now he's an all-star player, so he's not underrated anymore. And... Now we got to see what they do. I'm not the biggest Al Horford fan, but he's perfect for the system. They still do need a rim protector because you have the LeBrons and the Isaiah Thomas that if you have that length and athleticism that can protect the rim and block shots, it's a benefit to you. And I think that's the only missing piece is a rim protector and a, a person that can crash the boards and somebody that can slide Al Horford back to that four and let him play the position that he has the size and athleticism to play, but he is kind of a mismatch at the five. So you can play on small ball five if you really had to do it against certain lineups, but they're going to really have to find out a way to stop Isaiah Thomas and LeBron James and other players from getting to the rim. Cause that's one of their biggest holes is that, that they get destroyed in the inside. So, and rebounding too. So once they fill that hole, or they just do team rebounding, gang rebounding is what we call it. Maybe that'd be the answer. Everybody just put effort and energy and just try to get as many, as, put yourself in the best position and get, grab as many rebounds as possible. So we'll see what happens. Uh, check out my website, analysisplayground.com. It'll be in the comment in the description below. Check out my Facebook page, analysisplayground.com. It'll be in the comment in the description below. All you got to do is click the link. It'll send you to the Facebook page. It'll send you to the website. Like on Facebook to show support. That's all I'm asking you to do. And check out my other videos from What to Expect. And let me know what you guys want to see next. And I'll be back with another video tomorrow. Quinway Basketball Analysis signing out. And let me know what you guys think about the Boston Celtics heading into next season.